Just try and keep calm, composed. Take our time if we need to take our time. Hello, my name is Vinnie and this is my husband, Belle. We are here today... So I can hardly hear you. Oh, gosh, OK. We are here today to ask for a £50,000 investment for a 15% share in our company, Vinnie and Belle's Rustic Indian. So currently we produce a range of four chilled, fresh Indian cooking sauces. We only use natural ingredients. They're healthy, they're nutritious, they're very easy to use. The entire range is gluten-free. Aside from the shahi, which is the blue sauce, they are also dairy-free, and you'll always end up with a traditional, tasty Indian meal. In January this year, our product was launched into 120 stores of a national independent supermarket. We have a listing with the largest health food distributor in the southeast of England who in turn also supplies five organic food stores in London. We are imminently going live with the largest online grocer and we've brought some samples for you to try and after which we'll be happy to answer your questions. An understated pitch from this husband and wife team. They're looking for £50,000 for 15% of their fresh curry business. Key for Kelly Hoppen is Rustic Indian's authenticity. Oh. <laughs> Did you actually start making this in your own kitchen? Yes. Um, these, are, these are recipes that have been handed down many generations and we actually wanted it to be more personal. And what sort of competition is there out there? I mean, is there any anything similar? I mean... This is the thing, the, the supermarket shelves are saturated with the preserved jars, mm. yet there's nothing in the fresh, you know, in the fresh section and we just, just can't get to grips with that. So there, there's no competition whatsoever? No. Not in the supermarket, no. And, and what's the shelf life of this? Um, currently we have 12 weeks. Have you looked into why they don't do fresh? They do have um, fresh Italian sauces, so why somebody has not thought about making fresh Indian cooking sauces, I, I think it's purely down to the shelf life. Yeah, and their model. Yeah. And, the mo and their model. Yeah. I think it is as well. Yes. I've got a little bit of experience in this. It's different, admittedly, it's Caribbean. Um, but one of the reasons why we very much keep away from this, it's extremely expensive. It is. And it's shortened lifespan, which means higher level investment and wastage. So all the big players in this marketplace if this was a market opportunity, they would have launched it. I'm wondering why they haven't. I, I, I don't think they've actually seen it. I trust, don't think they've trust me, they, they, uh, where we yeah. see it, they spend they spend tens of millions a year in this type of arena. They they'd know it. A lesson on the workings of the prepared food industry from a dragon who knows. But Piers Linney wants to bring the pitch. Back around to basics. I'm just going to talk about the food. I had the chicken. I love it. Simple as that. <laughs> very straightforward for me. And I, I grew up, uh, my uncle was Indian and very traditional. I know what the real food should taste like. And you're right, it's quite different in terms of um, what we're presented with in restaurants. I mean, I like your packaging. I mean, I know, it, but it stands out because it's different, isn't it? Yes. You know, like, like you said, you just don't see this. When I first saw it, I couldn't work out what is it because I'm not familiar with that existing, so it's, it's quite amazing you found a niche. And that's, that's pretty hard to do. So, I can see you've put Vinnie and Belle on the back. Um, is, it, is it a bit of an ego trip? No. Um, everything that you see here has been created by us. So, the illustration there was actually supposed to be my mum and dad back in the 70s coming over from India. When we were carrying out our marketing, everybody seemed to assume 
that this was Balanai. Right. And that's, oh, that's where the branding Vinnie and Bal's Rustic Indian came but from. The reality is Vinnie and Bal is Vinnie and Bal, yes. the two people I see in front of me. The big issue for me is actually you guys in terms of the product and its positioning. The reason why people like Lloyd Grossman have sold millions. It's the reason why Levi Roots is a millionaire. It's because it's the brand that pushes the client to mm -hmm. buy the product. I'm wondering what you've got to drive the brand values behind it. I mean, we actually like Vinnie and Bell's Rustic <laughs> Indian. We started a PR campaign in January and um, it's been very successful for us. The main headline grabbing publications are The Observer, The Guardian, um, Daily, Mail, Daily Mail, Daily Mail on Sunday. Um, John Turow from MasterChef actually recommended a buy on this product. That is a huge amount of PR, a huge amount, which would essentially get your name out there. The, the problem I'm having with all the PR that you've had, I would have thought that you would have had a much more successful business by now. Um, we just started the PR in January this... It doesn't matter, you've still had it. Yeah, and we've had a phenomenal response. The, the problem is we can't actually supply everybody because it's not readily available. A PR company is going to have to go out and market you, but I don't think £50,000 is nearly enough money to actually build the brand that you want. It's just not something that I feel comfortable investing in. Um, so I'm afraid I'm out, but I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. There are issues around this. I love the look of it, but you're going to have to spend a fortune. I have a view. If you're spending less than £3,000 a month on PR, you might as well not spend any money at all. I won't be investing, so I'm afraid I'm out. A double blow for the entrepreneurs, as Kelly Hoppen and Deborah Meaden are spooked by the money needed to launch yet another cooking sauce. But Peter Jones wants to learn more about the couple's business credentials. What do you do, Belle, now? Well, predominantly, most of my time is rustic Indian, our children. Um, we have a leasehold business. You've got a leasehold business. What's, tell me about that quickly. So, yeah, we, we bought this bakery um, as an ongoing concern in uh, 2008. Um, and we, we bought at the peak of the market, so to speak, and the recession has kicked in. It's... it's There's an economic downturn yeah. and, um, you know, the business sort of breaks even. And how much money have you put into that business? Well, I mean, uh, including money that we put in and the money that we borrowed, that was 120,000. Did you know what it was making at the time you bought it? Yeah, but in 2008, when we purchased it, um, the, the business had started to quieten down just because there was less money around. I struggle with it a bit because I've developed a theory over the last 30 odd years in business that entrepreneurs who blame the weather, the recession, the government, never make it. I'd be in that bakery now and I'd be trying to make that bakery work. Yes, it's having an interest. It's having an interest in yeah. the bakery. You, know, but you have an interest, you've invested I... it. Why are you not in there making that bakery work? Why are you not in there baking the bread, making that one work? It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> Vinnie and Bal's admission that they'd given up trying to make their current bakery business profitable has unnerved the dragons. And Peter Jones has made his mind up. This is not something, sadly, for me to invest in. The brand positioning is wrong. I'm, I'm not convinced on the product. I do think that there is a very, very good reason why that marketplace has not been tapped. Um, I just think that you're trying to punch way above your weight. So I'm going to wish you the best of luck. It's a lovely product, but it's not an investment I can take forward, and I'm out. Okay, thank, thank you. I agree, it's a lovely product. It's well packed, um, well presented, but I just don't think the problems with supermarkets taking it 
can be overcome. And for that reason, I'm out. With four tycoons gone, only the newest and youngest dragon remains. But has Piers Linney's early enthusiasm for this fresh curry business been dampened by the more experienced old guard? Finney Bell, there's two things that have been discussed that wind me up. So one is, you know, entrepreneurs get into businesses, they make mistakes, it's not what they thought it was. It's not something you should be strung up for. That's just life and that's how you learn. Another thing is, is I don't pretend to be an expert in supermarkets. You know, this is the way it's done and that's the way the market is and that's the price and they're going to squeeze you and it's been done before. It's just nonsense. When you go into a supermarket now, you're actually looking for something which is differentiated, something that is fresh, yeah. I trust its supply chain. Maybe there's a story behind it. I know it's not some made-up brand that's been manufactured, shoved into a jar with who knows what, just so it's got a shelf life. I mean, the world has to change. But you're going to need more than 50k. That's the issue. I mean, a lot more, I'm not even 100k, I mean, hundreds of thousands. Nice. Did you get spend a 50 on you, just your branding? You could. The question is, can I? I'll tell you, I'll make you an offer. It's a bit of a punt. I'd give you the 50,000. But I want 30 per cent. Is the 30 per cent that you asked for, is that negotiable? Because you did want to go to a maximum of 25. Is, it, is there any movement in that? No. Um, may we ask how you see yourself fitting in with our brand, our vision, and what do you think you can bring to the table to help us get to where we want to get to? Well, you know, you don't know me as well as some of the other dragons. That, that's the issue you've got, but you have to take, you know, I've built businesses that are worth millions, tens of millions over the last five years during three recessions. And what I do have is lots of different networks. You know, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not the biggest well-connected person in, in retail, but you're not going to get this anywhere without some money. And, you know, th there's a bit of risk in this, let's face it. You want to have a chat in the boardroom? Yeah, poor dream. <laughs> Can we just yeah, yeah, help yourself. On high gathering there. Why do you know we got to be now? We got to do it. So, yes. Calm down. So, what is it? Just asking the truth. Thanks. Yeah, let's get it yeah. Yeah. Let's ask the question. Okay. All right, please. We'd be happy to accept your offer. Cool. Well done. <laughs> After a tricky negotiation, Piers Linney seals the deal, and an overwhelmed Vinnie leaves the den with her husband, Bal, and the £50,000 investment they need. Still not too happy, is she? I don't know whether she was crying out of delight or... Not Piers, come on. I th no, I think you'll do well. I'm pleased they got investment. I'm just pleased it wasn't my money. It's amazing. It's life Capital A, yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you can't put a value, even though we just have, in what we've just given away and what we got back, but that's not really the true value of a dragon. It far outweighs what he's just invested. We know that, he knows that, and now it's actually about building that. <laughs>